Microphone check. One, two, what is this? It's the five foot seven assassin in the podcast business. I am your host, Rohan Patra, the rap music plug at your service. Here we are again. For those who heard the last bonus episode I released or follow me on Twitter, it should come as no surprise to you that I absolutely adore Leather Boulevard, an album created by Pink Sifu and Ali as Be Kool-Aid, a record that did so much good to my spirit, helping me get through some really tough times this year. So I'm sure you can imagine how honored I feel to welcome Pink Sifu to the show today to not only dive into the creation of this masterpiece, but also discuss what he's learned from legendary musicians from the past, his chameleon-like versatility as an artist, and how he approaches collaboration, along with insight into his brand new surprise album that just dropped a day ago on Halloween, It's Too Quiet, a collaborative record with Cincinnati's own Too Rich Benji, who also makes a special appearance towards the end of this conversation. So it goes without saying that you certainly do not want to miss this. The Rap Music Plug podcast presented by QLC TV is the remedy to the I don't have anything good to listen to problem. Through in-depth artist interviews, album reviews, and general rap commentary on the best that the underground rap scene has to offer, this is your one-stop shop to knowing what to add to your queue, play next, or pop into your record player. Welcome to the show. All right, Pink Sifu, how you doing today? Yeah, man, I'm chilling, man, running around here like a chicken with his head cut off. Yeah, you're, you you just came out right, of a photo dude. shoot. Yeah, we was we finishing up um album art for the for the thing for the yeah for the thing yeah for something that album. I think we'll hear more about if people want to keep yeah. listening. You might want to keep listening. I'll just say that. Oh um, god! Oh god! Before we get into all of that interesting new stuff, really, when I think about you, I feel like you're one of the most eclectic artists I can think of, and. Your records are just span so many different genres, so many different styles. You're really a jack of all trades. But but with a lot of artists, because you're not the only one who, you know, yeah. ventures in different in different styles and things like that. But I find often artists who do that kind of lose their sense of identity do, while doing that. But with you, that just doesn't happen. So as someone who's, you know, worked in so many different styles both across albums and within the same albums. How do you just, how do you do that without losing that distinct, authentic Sifu feeling while you're doing it? I don't really know. Um, I really try to make sure the intention there all the time, you feel me? It's just like, I guess I'm just staying on the right mission and like not shying away from like who I am internally. So, I think that's all it is for real. It's all about just me just keeping, like, I don't know, keeping my authentic self in it. You know what I'm saying? Not not forgetting, like, what I'm doing this for, like, where I come from with this shit. Like, just really just, I feel like myself is in my music. So, like, no matter what sonic or what background it's in, it's going to always be that. And And what's been, like, the driving force for you when you, kind of approach an album and think about the kind of styles of music you want to lean into? Like, what kind of inspires you to make a decision to, uh, for example, really kind of dig into that punk aggro feel with with the, the Negro album? Really, is it's just what I'm feeling like, like, and like, what's inspiring me, um, and kind of what I haven't done yet, you know? Like, that's... Mm-hmm. That kind of pushes what's to come. What I'm a fan of that I haven't necessarily. Oh, I ain't, I ain't explored that yet. I like I like exploring new shit that I'm a fan of already. So it's really all about that. Like I listen to a lot of music, or like I I'm a fan of a lot of different sounds. So I try to just. I'm a fan of Sunra. I'm a fan of Mad Lib. I like. I'm a big fan of them because I feel like they use their lifetime to really explore all the sonic. So like, I'm kind of here to do the same thing in a sense. Yeah, I find that you really don't shy away from any different from like any sounds really. 
it all kind of gets into that like seafood blender at some point or the other. It's it's pretty Oh God, great. that gumbo, that gumbo. Yeah, That's what exactly. it's got. Exactly. And you know, another trademark piece of your element of your music is that voice of yours. It's like really raspy. It can be very soothing, but also it can be into that like more aggressive uh, type style that you've used on, you know, that that feature on the Arm and Hammer album, which was crazy. My Um, God, thank you, thank you. there's uh, I'm a hammer and my boys. yeah, yeah, they were just on the show last week. It Put was it a in there. really good time. So there's really not any artists I can think of right now that use such a vast array of different like vocal registers and tones in your music as you do. So what kind of pushed you to experiment with your voice in such a such a significant way throughout your career? What do you find interesting about that? I mean, I just like seeing, I ain't took vocal lessons yet. I'm trying to take vocal lessons soon, like definitely next year. But I just like seeing, I like using the instrument. You know what I'm saying? We are instruments, especially as an artist, musician. So I just like seeing what this bitch can do for real. And just like, I ain't going to shy away from like, like I said, like the sonics. Like, all right, let's see what we could do with this sonic. Let's see what it could do over here. Like, I, I just love tapping in with different, I'm blessed to be, able to tap in with different musicians that, that allow me to like that create that can help me create the atmosphere and we just it's it's beautiful my collaboration process right now with the musicians i work with and i produce with is amazing right now so you hear everything out of my brain right now i'm able to kind of do what i was what i'm thinking a little bit right now so Mashallah, it's blessed. It's blessed right now. Like I'm just that's what that's what motherfuckers been hearing for the past like two years. Yeah, I feel like you do yeah, definitely use your voice as an instrument because sometimes it's like I think of the words you're saying and sometimes I'm just thinking of like these textures that you're forming on Yeah. like a I'm thinking like smile with your gold on uh, gumbo. It's Yeah. like it's such a warm song with the the jazzy instrumental and like that's Yeah. what your voice does is like just cuts across like this like cloudy haze. It's it's incredible. Thank you, man. Thank you, bro. I appreciate that for real. Yeah, like I think of Fly Sifus and why I feel like you guys were such a great combo is because Anakin, like Frank's just just straight razor sharp, like He has the best voice. best voice. And then and then you're just so different. It's like a cloud that envelops his really straight to the point style. It's just uh, I love the way you use your voice. Nah, Frank. Frank is my ace, bro. That's my that's my twin for real. I love Frank. He got a lot of good things coming with Mutant Academy that motherfuckers is not ready for. So be I've ready heard for that I've shit. heard when Be I talked ready to for him, he that said shit. that Mune Academy is about to have their like next second wind Yeah, coming. nigga. Yeah, nigga. Mm It's -hmm. about it's that time. It's that time. And and so, you know, in prepping for this interview, I when I was thinking of like your unique vocal style, I was reminded of the fact that you're a huge fan of D'Angelo and Erica Badu. Oh, uh, dude. Dude. And it clicked for me for the first time when I was reading that or hearing that in previous interviews is that. You do use your way, your voice in a way that's very reminiscent of a D'Angelo in particular, like in the ways that he sang on Voodoo and Black Messiah and Badu, just in this, like, I don't even know how to describe it, but it's, it's, uh, it's not always about the words, even though the words are strong. It's about just kind Yeah, of like it's the about feeling the texture, that it man. I learned that from niggas like D'Angelo, Kanye West. Like, I learned that from, like, a few artists. Kid Cudi, like, it ain't really all about the James Brown. Nigga, like, I learned that about a lot of folks. Like, even Michael Jackson. Like, I was just telling, talking to the homie about, like, how, to, how them breaths and accents. Like, a lot of niggas don't do that no more. Like, I'm a fan of all of that shit. Just, like, texture. So, like, Yeah, I, I love that. D'Angelo, I, I learned how to sing trying to mimic D'Angelo, you feel me? And try to mimic D'Angelo and Prince. That's how I learned how to kind of try to do my thing. So, like, you definitely going to always hear that in me. And Badu, she raised me. Her music raised me. For her, like, for her. Badu and Jill Scott, like, literally raised the fuck out of me. Like, I, I, they was the first Neo Soul songs I, I knew the words to. Like, so, yeah. Them that you always gonna hear them niggas in my shit, <laughs> like for real. Like, Yeah, I feel like uh when I when I first heard a D'Angelo record, I think it was Voodoo. Like obviously I'm I'm young, so I wasn't I wasn't listening to that thing when I was five, but I I won't listen to Voodoo when it came out, but I was listening. 
I was a fan of Belly and I was a fan of Devil's Pie. Oh, okay. and I always run Devil's Pie back because of Belly. So yeah. and that's the thing. That's the thing with me too. A lot of I found out about a lot of my favorite musicians, and I found out about songs that really wasn't directly hip hop off of movies. Right. So like I would like I found out about the Pixies off of Fight Club. I found out about D'Angelo off of Belly. I found out about like just just movies was just oh shit what the fuck is this song like so like but i wasn't i ain't gonna cap like i was listening to voodoo when it came out Mm -hmm. but when i moved to la so many niggas in the beat scene was just kind of probably same thing you doing before i even knew it d'angelo they was like yo like you be doing because i was mimicking prince and if you look at a lot of D'Angelo interviews, that nigga say the same thing. I was just mimicking Prince. But, like, I was mimicking Prince, and niggas was like, yo, you kind of got a little D'Angelo vibe. And I was like, yo, I ain't really tapped in D'Angelo. I don't even know Devil Pie. They was like, nigga, you got to listen to Voodoo. And I bumped. I went with Cray when I moved to L.A. That's when I really got into D'Angelo, Slum Village. And then from the beat scene, Ganja Sufi. And, like, mm-hmm. all that shit. Like, Flying Lotus Heart. So, like, so shout out. LA for really putting the whole beat scene, my design, I read, like a Ludum, like niggas just really just put me on to the whole shit. Ross G. Like mm-hmm. I learned about some rock from Ross G. Like wow. from a Ross G mix. So like like yeah, the LA scene really put me on to a whole like oh, okay, where I could do it like this, bro. And I ain't know about yesterday's new quintet till I was at a, a, a one of my designs parties. No oh, wow. Because they was playing yesterday's new quartet and I was like what is this and they was like yo this Madeline and I was like but this jazz and I was like nigga you don't know about yesterday's new quartet and like I already knew about Madeline and Quasimodo mm. but then I didn't know about his other aliases and that's when I got I was like what he got yeah he got yesterday's new quartet then he got this other DJ shit and he got I was like what the fuck now I got I just blown away so like yeah shout out LA for sure like, yeah, I feel like when I first heard D'Angelo, I, I, it was a kind of a similar experience to when I first heard you in that it took me a while to really like understand what you were doing because it yeah. just kind of shifted the paradigm of what I think was possible for you in this case in rap or anything around the kind of ecosystem of black music. And I get yeah. that same feeling because now you're one of my favorite artists and D'Angelo Voodoo, that's probably my favorite album ever, like of any genre. Ever. Same. Like, same. It's a... Uh, because it got like, so many elements in yeah, it. Yeah. So much like, subtlety. So many, yeah. Yeah. I hear the Ganja Sufi too and that raspiness in your voice. Like, Ganja, Ganja Sufi's Sufi is a master of that. I, that's, that's my sensei for real, bro. Like, I learned so much from Ganja Sufi music. Like, and, and moving outside of like the vo- voice as an, an instrument, obviously you have some really interesting like lyrical content too in your music. And I find the way you talk about, you know, socio political issues is pretty multifaceted and i feel pretty authentic to you because the way you touch on these topics can be you know incredibly in your face but then where you know you're being like very combative and getting people riled up but then it can be very meditative at times too where it feels like the burden of these like kind of morbid thoughts are weighing on you very heavily and i can feel that as a listener that you're you're really like you're just you're really reckoning with what you're talking about and Mm. i i wonder like what role would you like your music to play in the for the lives in the lives of people who you know are unfortunately affected by you know racism or classism and the American system that we have today? I mean, I want my music to just be the soundtrack to like what's going on. You know, I'm not I'm not an activist, but I am a revolutionary um, artist, and I support the revolution, and I. I don't fuck with oppression at all on any level. It's it's been free Palestine. It's free Tigray. It's free all the nations that's like getting fucked over right now. Always been about that. I just I just don't want motherfuckers to just stand for shit, really. And I just wanna, you know, I'm not like the niggas that's like like Negro, I was angry. You feel me? Like like yeah, I I I ain't never shot at a cop. I ain't never shot at no pig. I ain't never, you know what I'm saying? But I just don't want motherfuckers. I just don't want to, like, I don't know. Like, I feel like the Holocaust and the slavery was just crazy because it was just, like, a few niggas got a group of niggas Mm. to just go anywhere. And I just, and in my music, I just want to stop 
that train of thinking. Like, I just, like, don't let a few niggas take a thousand niggas and take y'all to some gas chamber or take y'all, like, when you listen to my music, please be like, yeah, nah, not me. Like, you feel me? Like, I just, like, mm-hmm. I like, I, like, I like, that's, that's kind of, I just want to push that thought on the niggas, you feel me? And just, like, that, I want to be the soundtrack for that thought, that thought process, you feel me? Yeah, I mean, you're speaking about the power of, like, thinking and how words can have such power. Because like you said, it wasn't like a whole millions of people just thought the Holocaust was a great idea. And like, yeah, it makes perfect sense. It was a few people that just were great at communicating propaganda. And it's scary. And and it it shifted and it feared and it had millions of niggas like listening to these few niggas that was able to do that. And I'm like, nah, nah, bro like that can't happen anymore yeah and i think the way you do it again is just uh i think because you tackle it in such so many different ways i think it can be pretty digestible and maybe more so digestible to the average person than than other music because it's you're giving you're hitting for me from all angles some people respond to that combative shit some people respond to the really direct like this is bad and anybody who does this a bunch is a fucking piece of shit but then other people kind of need it in a different yeah. way where you speak to the traumas and the hurt. And then they're like, damn, that that does hurt. That would hurt me if I'm in that position. And I just love the way you kind of put it all in one kind of envelope. It's like, fuck all that shit, bro. Like, we niggas is not here to be treated like this. So I'm just trying to push all that. And you know, you when I think as well about your music, another hallmark of it is the art of collaboration. And I think it's something that's really hard to master as an artist. And I've long held this belief and you actually mentioned him, which is interesting. I've long held the belief that you are the closest artist to Kanye in the sense of how impeccably skilled you are at incorporating other guests into music, particularly when it comes to using their vocals, which is something that you just mentioned Kanye was a master of. And I feel you've proven that time and time again, no better, you know, uh, example than leather Boulevard. So talk to me about your approach to collaboration and how you seem to know where to place guests on a song to make them fit seamlessly. I mean, thank you for saying that, bro. First off, my G. I, honestly, bro, I'll praise the Allah, bro. I'm just, I just hear shit. I just hear shit. And I'm just like, and I just, I'm just blessed to have the people that could, execute what's in my head so like i'm just yeah i don't i don't know i'm a fan of this shit bro i'm a nerd i stay up late as fuck secrets and shit like listening to shit so arranging shit so i don't know bro i can't i can't i just love i love sounds i love playing with sounds do you do you find when you're um kind of like picking out uh who to reach out to to kind of do a certain part on a on a on a song like what what kind of qualities are you looking for out of that kind of collaborator is it just kind of like a like-minded view of music because you definitely have like a certain ecosystem of people that you frequently collaborate with so like what are you looking for in a collaborator i guess i can ask really just someone who can get the job done Mm. and that's ready to lock in with me that could just lock in with me. Like, I be, you feel me? Like, my collaborators be knowing, like, all right, nigga, it's go time. I'm going to be here for, like, a few hours or a couple hours. Let's let's get it. Like, let's record, 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 record. Like, just work. Like, you feel me? I work like one of them old school niggas. You're going to you gonna have to roll up one more game. Mm-hmm. But, like... Uh- I work like one of them old school niggas. Like, nigga, we in this bitch like me. You feel me? Like, yeah, I mean, that's gang. They'll tell you, like, I'm, that just be my shit. Like. Yeah, I mean, like, speaking of collaboration, I mean, the 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 last album you 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 dropped here is quite literally like a personal classic to me. I have to say, and I'm just gonna open up the topic of Leather Boulevard by thank uh, you, thank you. Nah, Leather Boulevard I, is my baby. Man, that I have to say, like, I need to thank you for that shit because I made a whole I made a whole bonus episode about this a month ago, actually, which is basically was just detailing how this album 
on one hand soundtracked the most happiest period of my entire life in a brand new relationship so many blissful moments it was really like constantly in rotation stamped that part of my life but then a breakup happened and it took me a while to to get back to this album because it reminded me so much of that time and it was painful but when i when i finally did do it though post breakup and listen to it i feel like the album did another thing for me it kind of like helped me confront the loss that i was dealing with in a really direct way it was very therapeutic and i think that's all just due to the fact that this album was so rich in emotion there's so much going on that i could latch on to to make me kind of feel something and i just have to thank you for that because it, it really had a real impact on me man, thank you bro what the fuck man thank you bro that's that's what niggas do this for bro me and ali really was in that bitch for a minute bro five years really trying to get that shit right so thank you for that ass. Yeah. Man, and, and let's get into that what you're trying to do so like I, I really feel like you set a tone and an atmosphere that was so intoxicating so what was the feeling you wanted listeners to to take away from listening to to leather boulevard <laughs> i mean with the leather boulevard shit bro me and ali just wanted it to be better than brown but also like me and I, ali has been fucking elevating so crazy musically like playing keys playing guitar like just like going crazy without the sample so i just want to show and like even me like i've been arranging with musicians i've been like replaying samples like with musicians like we've been just cutting up so it's like i just wanted to show niggas that's where we was at musically but also i didn't want to shy away from what me and ali give with the feeling of being kool-aid like i feel like it's that neo soul rap shit it's like black star with d'angelo it's like it's like slum village and, and like the roots it's like it's like we give like that vibe right now and i just didn't want to shy away from that but i also wanted to give it yeah fuck it i want the roots it up i want to like all right let's add some musicians in this bitch let's like get crazy let's we started connecting i started connecting with dj harrison and i was like fuck it let's we we a big fan of butcher brown like ali's been a fan of them longer than me so that that just made sense and it was like they already love Ali's beats, so it was just like duh. So it was like everything just aligned perfect. But through that five years, we was just where we going with it, where we going with the sound, blah blah blah. And then it clicked after Gumbo, after I clicked, after I linked with DJ Harrison and and Butcher Brown. That's when we was like, nigga, all right, we found it. So it was just we just wanted to. Just give you something that was better than the last shit. And and like and Brown is still a classic. It's nothing better than anything, but just give you we more mature now. I got babies now. We've been through hella shit now. So it's just we just wanted to give you something more mature, like the elevated, uh, elevated version of what we get. I mean, I think that the elevation and the maturity was there. Like I'm thinking of track like sound good because one, it's an amazing song, but it, it was really mature because Going back to how I was saying my experience with the album, when I listened to it, you know, when it dropped, I was in this great, happy mood. That song felt like fun and like playful and like cocky, but still classy and shit. But then when I listened to it in a more negative space, it felt like the same thing, except it felt like you were longing. It felt like you were you're like hoping something happens, but it doesn't. It kind of yeah. seemed darker. And I was like, how did the same song make me feel like two different things like this is crazy. Like that's that timeless shit. I love yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and what, what inspired you in particular to want to hone in though, on this like romantic black utopia of an album, like with leather Boulevard, the whole concept. I mean, just cause let just cause be Kool-Aid in general. We just, we just always pushing black love. You feel me? We always pushing just like the idea of just like black power and just like, black fantasies you feel me like so it's just that's just in us in our music or like what i what all these beats inspire me to write about you feel me like so it's just that's just in us so yeah we just had to we just want to mature it up you feel me? like but that's just in us though like even from brown syrup we've been doing we love we love women shout out black women shout out pussy <laughs> so, always shout out pussy the right pussy though. 
No, the wrong pussy gets you killed. <laughs> so, yeah. This is all oh, that's great advice. It's very true. And you know, you talked to past interviews, you mentioned him already, Prince. You know, he's been a huge influence on you. Yeah. And I think so, you so. I think you spoke about him in relation to the way he represented romance and sex in music. And uh yeah. I also really appreciate that about your music in that. You know, you and as you were what you were saying about Prince to finish that thought was that he was saying you were saying that he could be very masculine, yet also very simultaneously soft in the way he expressed his like emotions. And I found that's really interesting and something that I like about Leather Boulevard, which is that I don't personally feel like I'm always that guy who's the big macho man. Like I like the tender love shit and the quote unquote soft type of vibe when it comes to romance and i feel like your music and this album in particular was inviting to someone like me i i didn't feel alienated i felt like it kind of like appeals to like a broad spectrum of general love and how so how important is that to represent love in that sort of way i mean it's super important bro because it's like you just we just trying to show you all the aspects of what's going on like in real life like you said, everybody not like this certain thing, bro. So we just showing you what we regular is all the time. So it's like, it's important to just show who you are, like your true identity. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I feel like sometimes rap definitely has a, a tendency to kind of appeal to one note to like the, that quote unquote alpha male, even though I hate that word, but that alpha male shit where, you know, it can get kind of tiring sometimes. Exactly, bro. Like, like, fuck, we ain't, we ain't acting. We ain't yeah. acting, bro. We trying to show you the real. And so you speak about Ali. I want to kind of just understand in more detail, like, what makes him special as a producer? Because, my God, the way, what he did with texture and soul in these beats is, like, on another planet. He's the best. Ali is what all these producers, I feel like, want to be like in a sense when you, like, Talking about someone who understands the old hip hop shit, but understands where this shit's going, understand the trap shit, understand Neo. So Ali understands all the aspects of it, bro. And he don't shy away from none of it. So it's just I love that nigga, bro. And he's just so musically, just organically, authentically him. He's like, like I mean, what he does with drums is crazy. Oh. So it's just he's just he's just crazy bro he's one of my favorite producers like through it all whatever genre we in you feel me i, I like and i learned through, through leather boulevard that whatever album whatever sonic album i work on i, I want ali present because what he's able to do with just ideas and just to bounce off of is just beautiful he's just the perfect producer like he's really my ace like he's really my ace like we locked in for life I I couldn't said more like the drums with like Brandy and Aaliyah, Brandy. Aaliyah, he's just that, he's just different, bro. Yeah. He's just different. Like even with flips and he's just he just understands, bro. He just understands how to complete an album. Like he's just the perfect nigga for that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the last thing I want to ask about this record before we move on to something special here or something other, another thing that's special other than Leather yeah. Boulevard is like how did you how did you get how are the guest vocalists and producers involved in recording Leather Boulevard? Because there's so many. Like, was it a big studio session one day or two days jam session type thing? And you worked from that? No, nah, it was it was a lot of sessions and like ideas laid. And then I would just have sessions to just record backup vocals and just direct and arrange that with with, with like all the backup singers. And so you were really the leader of the the arrangements when it comes to the like the, the guests and the vocals pretty much like but also like we was bouncing ideas off of each other too like it was but yeah yeah pretty much like they was just listening to whatever ideas i had for real and, and they was just lending whatever ideas they had too you see what i mean we was just vibing really just vibing like so it was so that's what again like bless them for really just seeing my vision yeah, it's just uh, every every collaboration on Leather Boulevard was just easy. I mean, it felt easy because I feel like you put in the work to 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 kind of make this environment where everybody knows what they're contributing, 
is going to be treated with care, you know? Exactly. Exactly. So that's, that was the whole energy beyond it. Like everybody knew we was coming back to a a Kool-Aid project. So they knew like, all right, I got you. Like, so, and they gave that energy. I appreciate them. It sound like, you feel me? It sound like we we spent time and we was very particular and intent, intensive on what we did. And you were selfless too, because like I'm thinking of that track, uh, the one that's lives kind of like the short track. It's pretty much live singing. Like yeah. that's one of my favorite songs, and that's a that's song that I know when I play for song. other people, they're like, "Yo, that sounds great." And I'm like, "Yeah, you just let her take the wheel." Live, one of my favorite artists. Like live the live is literally the goat. Like live live like for real. Like live is the the prince, the the one that everyone like wants to be. Live is. I look at Liv like that. Like, I want to be like Liv, like, awesome. Like, how she's able to just be in there and just churn out some shit low-key by herself sometimes. And just, even if she get an idea to somebody, like, Liv is a leader and all of that. And she's able to, with her voice, she's crazy. So, like, oh. yeah, yeah. Why why not give Liv that? And then she laid that down. She laid it down. It was Ali and Liv. And I was like, nigga, I ain't got nothing to do on this. Somebody just do a little bit on the background. And I got you. Like, that's it. Like, you, you lace that. Like, what? Like, yeah, she's she she's she's just incredible. I'm a firm believer in when something's done, it's done. Mm-hmm. Don't don't do nothing. Don't do nothing with it. Yeah, like that track Been Living from her from back like a few years ago. That's a song that I can play. I think I played for 30 people, absolutely all 30 of them will say and have said, oh, that's like the that song is incredible. They don't need to ha- be oh, a fan God. of anything. It's undeniable. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's up, man. So, yeah. Uh, now, I'm. let's get into the new album. So, do you want to bring him on? Hell, yeah, I want to bring him up. Hold, hold on. We're about to, about to tap in with my boy one time. About to tap in with my boy Two Rich Benji one time. Yeah, yeah, Yo. yeah. Man. What's good? What's going, what's going on, brother? How you be? I'm good, man. Happy to have you here. I'm glad this all kind of worked out. Um, yeah, man. Thank you, man. I'm blessed to be here for sure. So focusing on the present now, we've been talking with Pink Sifu, really getting into what he does as an artist. But for those that are watching on video may notice that's not Sifu on the camera. And that's because that is right. Too Rich Benji. And he is here because he has about to and when you read that when you listen to this the album will be out they're dropping a surprise album on halloween titled it's too quiet and that's a collaboration between pink sifu and tourage benji who's in front of us today on the show super excited to have you on how are you doing today yes yes thank you thank you for one man i'm blessed i'm just blessed to be here blessed to be able to be rapping doing shit with the gang excited about this new project you know, and everything else coming forth for me. Yeah, you've been you've been on a you're getting on people's radars these days. And, you know, before we get into the album in more depth, I want to delve into your work a bit more first. So, you know, one thing I really like about you is you just got a very expressive, versatile delivery in terms of how you rap and kind of sing rap, you know, and you do play in the realm of trap music, but it just all feels very eccentric. That's kind of the word I'd, I'd pick. So, you know, who are some of your main influences that informed your kind of style of music that you like to make? Well, see, it's crazy because, like, I really, I truly started out, like, in the, like, hip-hop community as a dancer. So big influences were, like, like James Brown, Michael Jackson, visually and sonically and, like, through fashion and stuff. So, like, all that combined to, to like, now with my music, and me being from the Midwest too, like I'm big on auto tune and I'm real. I praise Roger Troutman, Zap Band. You feel me? They from Dayton, and I'm from Cincinnati, so that shit right up the road. So when I think, when you think about real funk music and coming from the Midwest for real, it's like I'm. I feel like I'm embodying that and really carrying that shit. You know what I'm saying? And like owning it and like mm-hmm. owning our sound because people will be like, the Midwest. What's the Midwest sound? And it's like it's that. Feel me? You hear auto tune and shit like that everywhere else, but it's like that's our shit. So that's how I look at it. You know I mean? For me, yeah, yeah, and I think that that popped off on some of the the features that you had on Gumbo, which I think really like really stole the show a lot of times on like Bravo in particular. But I 
uh also had the chance to listen to your last ep from uh uh 2022 ultrasound uh and yeah. what was interesting is when i first listened to it front to back i didn't have like a prior context of like you know like what were the singles what was the song that was the most popular whatever but even without that context when i finished the album i was like oh gucci slide is 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 fucking that's gotta be a single like that immediately heard it and i already had the melody in my head running it back i just feel like one thing i i noticed really quickly with you is that you have a real knack for songwriting uh that kind of just makes the music really catchy pretty instantly like i said once again like being big on performing to me i feel like i uh i look at crowd reaction and, and i kind of understand that you know what I'm saying? I'm big on like lullabies and shit. Like that's how I look at my music and listen to my shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I'm trying to just hum it, memorize it, feel it, you know, make music for people that don't even probably understand the language. You know what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and sometimes I'm not necessarily trying to do that, but you know, I think that's just how I resonate with music even personally. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, no, and I think you uh, just generally with that project, like what we're, what were the kind of musical ideas were you that you were trying to explore with it? I don't know. I feel like I feel like when me and bro start collabing a lot more, like during like Gumbo era for him, we just start opening up to different like sounds. Like you said earlier, I was kind of got like a trap sound. I mm -hmm. think I was coming from that. Um, I started dipping into more like hip hop neo soul. He was like dipping into more like trap beats and shit, and. Uh, I think like this project is like a, a big combination of all those energies, like actually like fully, fully developed. You know what I'm saying? And uh, yeah, I don't know. yeah. And what what drew you and Sifu together? Well, really, like Cincinnati history for one. You know, me being from Cincinnati, and he he from Alabama, but you know, grew up in Cincinnati. So the collective GK fam, we kind of all like through school and high school and music and shit, all were connected. But me and Sifu didn't really link and get connected to like shit like 2015, 16, like yeah. kind of like we knew each other through the internet and like through like the dance world and shit, like by names and shit. But like we had never met. And um, I don't know, like we finally linked through the internet and then we started doing music in like 2020, some shit like that. And uh yeah, it took a minute because I, I had left to move to LA too. And then when I had came back, I had came back one trip, and then my nigga Swooty from GK Fam, my nigga Swooty Max, shout out Swooty, he was shout playing, out, he was playing Alien, two inch, one or two inch EPs, oh, yeah, and yeah. he was playing Tesla, and I was like, mm -hmm. nigga, like look up that shit if y'all ain't heard that shit, but like that shit slapped, and then he was just playing that shit while he was driving me home, and I was like, nigga, I was like, who this shit is? Like this two inch? He's like, yeah, this two inch, bro. I was like. Stop it. And I did text that nigga. I feel like that night I was like, bro, you going crazy. This, this, if you go. And then we just like linked a little bit after that too. Cause I had just been back home. Like I ain't really come home a lot when I was in LA. Cause I was mm. trying to make a shake in LA for real. So it was like when I came home and just see what, what niggas was on and shit. I was like, even with my nigga Devin, I shut up my nigga Devin oh, Burgess t shit. Like I like came back and I was like, oh my nigga Devin going crazy on the beats. I was like, all right, like let me. I just tapped in back with my folks and shit, like, on my day one. So, like, that was really what that was, too. It was like, oh, shit, damn, my nigga, too, it's going crazy. Let me, I'm like, I think I got a track and a blah, blah, blah. And then yeah. ended up being, like, end up turning to busting for real, like, after a while. So it was just like that. Yeah, and, and let's now, I think, get into this new album. And the reason why you guys are together today is that you're you're shooting uh, some photos for the new record. And... As a you know, a sneak peek inside the the curtain for a second for the people listening, you guys sent me this project about five out like six hours ago. So I've listened to it like twice, <laughs> and I have to say it was particularly a hard album to digest. Not because it was difficult to listen to, but because it's hard to really box in like what the kind of style of music. Like I do feel for sure trap rap is like a fundamental sound, but. There's a it's very liquid to me, you know, it's a lot yeah. of different kind of influences just kind of like come in and out, wash over. There's a lot of beat switches and outros, too, that keep things pretty fresh. So what kind of could you just elaborate on the kind of ex musical experience you were looking to create with with such an eclectic project like this? Um, niggas just wanted to just shake up shit for real, for real. Niggas just was like, you know, we was just sitting around, had a 
had a few ideas floating. Then we was just like, yo, let's shake some shit up. So like musically, like think like beautiful chaos. Like for real, we just wanted to just, you know what I'm saying? Like kind of just amp you up, get you hyped. Like, you know what I'm saying? Get you ready for some or be the party that gets you turned. You feel me? I think we just wanted I, that's technically, that's kind of how I was coming at it, for real. Like, I ain't really have a, like, how I was like, oh, yeah, let the Boulevard do some mature shit, like, blah, blah, blah. And, like, gumbo, like, a mixture, all that, blah, blah, blah. Like, yeah, this is a mixture, a hell of sounds. But it's also, like, very amp and fun-based. Mm-hmm. So, like, we was having a lot of fun making this shit. So it was just... Definitely. That's what, yeah, that's what you're going to hear. Like, yeah, for real. Yeah, it's translating. It's definitely translating. The vibes are translating through them speakers. And hopefully, you know, that's, that's what we're trying to give off because that's all it really was, you know what I'm saying? Like you said, no real thought-out plan, like trying to do nothing crazy. It was just like, you feel me? Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Let's just do this shit. Like, let's do this shit. Shake it up one time. You feel me? Like, and it's really just the introduction also with the gang on, like with GK fam on, like the sound we bring it. So it was just For like, sure. definitely, it was just like a soundscape of like how we want to just, so who, yeah. Who are some of the, the producers? Because the only ones I can recognize, obviously, are the ones right now that are like, have the tag, like Tony Seltzer, I know's on, I know's on here, Harry Fraud. Yeah. What, who are the some of the collaborators and producers on this record? We got a uh, Conquest, Tony Burson. We got Keisha. We got Apollo Rome. We got Mellow X. We got Foise. We got Jacob Rochester. We got Groove. We got Swarvy. And you got Big Rube. Another got, fucking uh, Big Rube yeah, introduction. Wow. Shout out Lil Damien from DC. He produced that one. Um, Lance Skywalker. Lance Skywalker. Yeah, we got Lance Skywalker. Oh, we got Lance Skywalker. I swear, I thought I like. Is he producing or doing vocals? He produced. He produced one on here too. He produced, okay. Yeah. And then we got a uh, DJ Harrison helped us on some shit. A lot of shit, really. Um, high tech. High tech. Uh, from Detroit. So crazy. Yeah, I might. I might be bailing out on a couple, or I might. I might have hit everybody. Michael White, we got Michael fucking White. Michael White in this bitch. <laughs> yeah. He produced buttons. Michael White produced buttons, so we had to double back. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, speaking of gumbo, like it feel it felt yeah. like you guys kind of took a it feels like you took a few of the ingredients of gumbo and then kind of zeroed in on that. So on on it's too quiet. Because, you know, just when I think the album is going to sound like one thing, like particularly in the middle portion around like 9 10 11 12 those tracks where i think that the energy level is the highest shout out my boy nate from france my tour manager nate i love you he produced a couple on it oh wow. um, but that's yeah it. yeah 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 i mean just just when you that's that's the surprise factor that's the gk fam element for real for real like that but that's also the gumbo just just in just like gumbo in terms of just mixing shit up like that's just that's just what you're going to get. Like, I, I love mixing it up. I love, like, shit smacking you when you're not least expected. Like, for it. I feel like that's what this album is. Like, did nobody know I was coming out with an album? I damn sure, I damn near didn't even know I was coming out with an album. <laughs> that's just what the universe said, nigga. I, I was like, nigga, you can put out an album on Halloween. So, I was like, all right, bet. Like, it's just I like, <laughs> all right, bet. <laughs> <For real. laughs> <laughs> yeah and i i like that's what you're saying because like i think the album's gonna be one thing and then it ends with these like very murkier kind of hypnotizing tracks like uptown and what i became which sound amazing yeah. but they feel like a come down almost after like r.i.p britney murphy which yeah. by the way that's probably my favorite track like currently again on two listens conquest beat <laughs> and and yo tourich that 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 bar you had about clifford harris rubber band that <laughs> rubber band man Oh, that shit was crazy. Oh, that shit was crazy. Yeah, look it, man. You go. heard me. Yeah. yeah. No, I love that. And and I just think the energy is so fun, as you said, and, and you guys are doing so much. Like, why do you feel you two do have such a great chemistry together as artists? Oh, uh, man, that's just my nigga, bro. Like, we yeah. really... I, I, it's just been like that. Like, yeah. you about to see, like, just the whole gang, like, with Peso... 
with Quest, with everybody. Like, we really just, like... We trust each other's sounds. Yeah, bro. Like, we don't like, got that. You feel me? He don't got that. You feel me? And it's like, niggas, like... I started my sound with these niggas for real. Like I started really rapping with these niggas, like like my GK fam niggas, and like I started really. I just got a lot of my flavor, my own personal flavor, experimenting with these niggas. So it's just like you you getting that, you getting day one shit. You feel me? So that's just chemistry. You feel me? Like it's just organic. Like you can't even can't 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 even copy this. Yeah. Like, can't buy this shit. Yeah. yeah. We, but it is for sale, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, what, like, what inspired you two linking up, though, on an entire project? Because that's not necessarily always the next step for some people who work together well. Yeah, I mean, you know what I'm saying? We ain't dead yet. So, like, why, why not? You feel me? Like, and it's it's quiet out here, bro. So we just wanted to shake some up. You feel yeah, is that me? is that the name meaning of the the title? Like it's too quiet. Like we gotta something. Someone's gotta do something. Somebody gotta, gotta do something. Somebody gotta do something. Get boring. Like so we just we just out here just you know trying to give you that. You feel me? Like that's it's that's fun. really that. It's just, like it's just fun. Love it all, but it's definitely too quiet. Yeah, we just yeah. you know, but I, but I, but like, it's also being inspired by shit. Like it's like, yeah, yeah, that's the shit I'm talking yeah. about. Like I feel like the only thing that made me kind of feel like that was like Live album, like mm. Paris Texas album, like, and not even just because they screaming on the shit, but just cause like, like you said, I don't know what the fuck coming next. You feel me? Like it's like and you know, like I just. Not saying every album got to sound like that, but goddamn, bro. Like, I'm, I, if I know what your next shit about to sound like, if I know what your next five songs about to sound like on your album, do I really, should I really listen to it? So it's yeah. just like, that's that's just what I, you feel me? Like, that's that's also, like, the inspiration we had going in this shit. Like, nigga, let's fuck, let's fuck it up, bro. Let's fuck up some, let's push the culture for it, you feel me? Yeah, I think uh, yeah, I just love the energy you guys breathed into these kind of kind of beats. It felt it almost feels like you guys just like were a vacuum, like inhaling all these other sounds and just, but like you know, putting it into your own special sauce, and it came out so kind of yeah. There's some songs here that I just don't think I've heard like like I don't think I've heard a track like those last two that I mentioned, uh, R.I.P. Brittany Murphy, and then like what I became. Yeah. Like that's just strange, but in not in a way that's like <laughs> experimental in the way that people think of that term. Like it's just a strange, mm. but really fun. Yeah. All of it's really yeah. fun. Nah, a lot yeah, of soul. You, a lot of soul. That's for sure. A lot of soul too. Thank you, bro. Are we some soul artists, bro? Yeah, literally. Like for real. So, yeah, man. Thank you for thank, thank you for that. that. Thank you for that. I mean, yeah. I can't wait for niggas to hear this shit. My nigga Tourish went crazy on this shit. Yeah, motherfuckers like. That makes sense. Nigga, fuck. I mean, this shit, this shit coming out. <laughs> <laughs> this shit, we've been working on this shit for like a couple months, couple months. So it's like, yeah. No, I appreciate you tapping in to 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 set this up because I'm um I've already was just a big fan of what you're doing and uh you know too rich. I'm definitely gonna be um this got me for sure just tapped in like. If it wasn't right. ultrasound, is this like you really showed out? And I'm just really excited to see what you guys do next. Is there anything you want to shout out in addition to the the new record or anything else to know about it before we wrap this um, up? Yo, shout out Dynamite Hill, GKFAM, um, GKFA Baby, um, Feng Shui, Boy Band, Amtrak, the whole thing. Uh, goddamn Tourist, Benji, goddamn. Fucking anything this nigga make with his hands, tap in. Yeah, man. This, like fashion uh, designer, all that. Get with me. Get yeah, you got a me. nice. I saw one of your interviews. You got a pretty nice sense of fashion. Like you guys oh. definitely link up. Like like you got you align with the fashion for sure. Come on, yeah, bro. It's you, my man. baby right here. Thank so you. yeah, that's that's it though. Watch out for twenty twenty four. So we come in like Kobe. Like so, like yeah. yeah just just watch out. Like, it's definitely gonna be one of the ones. So yeah. Yeah, and and just thanks again for coming on the show, both of you. Uh just I'm very just excited to, you know, sink my teeth into this and I appreciate the time. I know it was a 
you guys are really busy, so thanks so much. Bro, it's so crazy. I fuck, I got to go DJ. So thank you. <laughs> so I, <laughs> big love, my G, for real. We about to do this. Big love, though, for real, my guy. Yeah. All right. Thank Peace you. out, guys, Good. man. Take thank care. You guys. Love, bro. Oh, boy. Peace. Sure. So there we have it, another episode of the Rap Music Plug podcast presented by QLC TV. I hope this episode gave you some new perspectives and insights into what the greatest art form known to man in hip-hop music has to offer. If you want to support the show in the most meaningful way possible, it would be my absolute honor to have you as a patron in the new Rap Music Plug podcast Patreon. Through this Patreon, you will be getting exclusive content such as bonus episodes, exclusive album recommendations, exclusive playlists, early access to episodes, and more. And above all though, you will be able to support the show directly in a way that will not only justify the crazy amount of time I spend on this show already, but allow me to cover some of the expenses related to supporting all of these great artists that we cover on the show through the website and will allow us to sustain and build on this amazing growth that the RMPP has experienced recently. So if you have any questions about any of the Patreon stuff or just want to keep tabs on the show, interact with me on rap music and all the great stuff that we can talk about, follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Rap Music Plug Pod or shoot me an email at QLCTV dot podcast at gmail.com you can also rate and review the show on apple podcasts and subscribe on youtube and spotify as well but that's enough self-promotion for this episode i hope you enjoyed it peace